All right, I think we're I think we're up. I think we're uh, doing a thing. Let me uh, put on my eyeballs and double check it on the old uh, telephone. I'll be able to tell you. You'll be able to tell me too. But uh, <laughs> yay. Uh, okay, so somewhere I've got this thing on here. All right. So we'll just check this out. Make sure make sure everything's copacetic. Looks like we're copacetic. I like it. I'm seeing myself, which is good. Okay, so, hey, hi. <laughs> it is broadcast night. Now, originally I had planned on having a guest with me, a friend, and uh, unfortunately, turns out um, his mom is in the hospital. Uh, it's a possibility of, they looked at gallbladder, they looked at uh, uh, pa uh, pancreatitis. Uh, either way, he's needed elsewhere. So uh, we're going to do this tonight just because, you know, you're, you're expecting it, and here I am, and it's a Saturday night, and you can't go anywhere anyway, so why not? I got some really good comments on the photo that I put up today. I want to thank you for that. Um, it was kind of cool because I, I went out and I took the photo of the Templeton Rye, which while I'm talking, I might as well go ahead and open it because it's not like there's a big secret as to what we're going to be drinking. And I can't see where... <laughs> oh, it, you know, when... I, so... Uh, my eyes started to go poopy uh, when I turned 45. It was almost like a 45th birthday present. All of a sudden, my eyes said, "We've had enough." And uh, it was—it's been—it's been an interesting transition. But I—I I just cannot see anything up close anymore, and it really is a bummer. I was talking about something. Oh, the—the the photo. Okay, so the photo, I took it. Oh, listen to this. Okay, so the photo I took, uh, it was nice and snowy on the ground. I, I swear to you, within a half hour after I took that photo, the snow was gone. So, I mean, get through. So, um, I, I'm happy that I took it when I took it, because it, like, went up to almost 40 degrees, and so, anyway, so, we're going to go ahead, we're going to do the Glencairn glass today. Uh, I know that there are people who are joining us for the first time, uh, because the membership and this little page here has grown exponentially, and I am thrilled. So we're going to kind of take this from a different level. We're going to go back to some of the basics and talk about some things that, um, that we probably should have talked about uh, a little more often. Um, not everybody is in the same place uh, in, in this bourbon world that I am. So we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Um, Tonight, of course, as, as advertised, we're going to be doing the Templeton Rye. It is an easygoing rye. Uh, ryes are traditionally a little more zesty. They have some more spice to them. And it's because they're made out of uh, primarily rye grass. Uh, they may have other things in it, too, like barley and whatever. But, um, but in, in, in rye's case, it has to have at least 51% rye or higher. Uh, with bourbon, you have to have 51% corn as the leading ingredient, that's just one of the, of the requirements to be able to call it a bourbon. It has to be made in the USA. Uh, it has to be 51% uh, corn, and then you, you can go more than that if you want. The sweeter bourbons are going to have more corn than that. You may have rye in that. You may have barley in that. Um, but it has to be at least 51% corn. Um, the barrels have to be brand new oak barrels, and they have to be charred on the inside. You can't use a barrel more than once um, as far as making a bourbon. Now, you can use those bourbon barrels for other things. For instance, today's bourbon barrels, when they have been used once, many times they go overseas and they're used to age scotch. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so, yeah, they, they can use those barrels that are halfway falling apart and have already had product in it for 20 years. Uh, whereas with bourbons, they have to be new barrels every single time and charred. Uh, so those are just some of the uh, some of the requ requirements. It has to be uh, 80 proof as a bourbon. Um, so rye is kind of ubiquitous. Um, rye is not, doesn't have those same uh, regulations, and you can have a Canadian rye, and you can have a rye from other countries and things like that, and it's still a rye. Matter of fact, rye was really really big in Canada. 
the Crown Royals are based on rye, or at least some of them have been based on rye in the past. So the rye whiskey um, is is uh, almost ubiquitous with whiskey. A lot of the a lot of the whiskeys in the turn of the century, uh, the uh, the 20th century, uh, were primarily rye. A lot of the drinks that we have, uh, as far as the mixer drinks like the Manhattans and and uh, so on. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, um, <laughs> it's right here, old fashioned. A lot of times those are done with rye, and traditionally in the past they were a rye drink. Uh, rye kept their popularity even when bourbon flattened out, like in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s when nobody was buying bourbon anymore. It was all beer and wine, mostly beer. You know, when you say bud, right? Some of us are old enough to remember those commercials, those of you who are not. Mm. Um, but rye still kept their popularity. Uh, and they are still really used a lot in the mixed drinks like the Manhattans and the Old Fashions and things like that. So um, so that's that's a little bit of a history on rye. I want to show you something else. Uh, again, we're, we're, we're doing a beginner's session a little bit. The thing about the, the Templeton rye that I like for beginners is this is a, it's an inexpensive rye. It's, you can find it everywhere. It's about $29.99, I believe, 30 bucks. You can find it just about anywhere. Um, and this one is only 80 proof. It's not very dark. It hasn't been aged. I think it said it was aged four years, which isn't remarkable. Uh, so this is a great one to get started with if you're just now starting to get interested in bourbons. Um, once you've gotten through this, or whiskeys, let's say. Once you've gotten through this and this is palatable and you like it, then you can start moving up and start being um, absolutely addicted to the idea of finding new bourbons and drinking new bourbons and tasting new bourbons and telling people about the bourbons that you drank and seeing if they've ever had it and having them go, what? Um, so that's one thing about the rye. That's why I chose this one today because it, it's a beginning rye. Ryes, because they're made out of rye grass and not corn, tend to be less sweet and more spicy. They tend to have a little bit more of a kick to them. Uh, even at 80 proof, this may have more zest going on, a little more life happening than, than an 80 proof bourbon. So we're going to try it in just a minute. I like to let my bourbon sit for a little while, especially when it's in a Glencairn glass. The Glencairn glass is traditionally used for scotches and it's got this fluted top which makes it easier to catch the nose. I'm going to, ooh, ooh, that was kind of nice. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for real here in just a minute. I want to go to camera two because we have the tech. Uh, let me go over here, and I'm going to go to camera two. Uh, did it do it? Did it do it? No. Well, I don't know, because I'm on a delay. So I don't know if it did or not. <laughs> That's funny. All right, we'll go back over here to the program. Uh, I don't think it went to camera two. So I got to figure out how to make that happen. Anyway, we'll just do it this way. All right. This is a jigger with a J. Jigger. Um, a lot of times with recipes, like if you're making a Manhattan or an old-fashioned or even a New York sour, it'll ask you for measurements. It'll say you want to use an ounce and a half or three-quarter ounces of a certain uh, beverage uh, ingredient. Like I was looking up some of the different beverages that you can make with bourbons and rice today. And it says use equal parts. Well, okay. You want to use equal parts, that's good. But without a measuring system, how do you know it's equal? So the jigger is how bars measure your, your drink, right? So if they give you this side, give them this look. Because they ought to be giving you this side. This is an ounce and a, uh, ounce and a quarter? That's a good question. Um, okay, it's one ounce on this side, and it's an ounce and a half on this side. The old jigger that I used to have, I think it was one and a quarter on the top and 0.75 on the bottom, but I could be wrong. And it got removed from my home, so I don't, I can't look at it and tell you. It was absconded with. Um, but I got a new one, and I like this one anyway. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so anyway, when you're doing your measurements... This is how to do it. I suppose I better make double sure that I'm on the right camera here. There. Okay. 
I have the technology of going two cameras. It just isn't working for me for whatever reason. But that's okay. It is all right. Let's give the Raya taste, shall we? I was going to do booze news. Um, I just haven't gotten to it. I went to the store, and the store took me a lot longer. I don't know why, but I think the whole town went to the grocery store tonight. I managed to get everything I wanted to get, and then some. But they had, like, way too many people in the store and two people at the checkout, so I had to do my own checkout. I think I should be paid by the hour for that, by the way. And I want union rates. Okay. So this is the Templeton Rye. Again, chosen because it's a lower proof. Uh, didn't want to scare anybody away. I was thinking about doing a, a, a proof over there. I've got 122.8 proof that I was going to get into. And I, eh, I don't want to scare anybody away, uh, especially some of those of you who are new. And plus, that one's a little more expensive and a little hard to find. And I wanted to lower the barrier of entry. So the Templeton Rye, uh, about 30 bucks, 80 proof. Let's give it a whiff. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm detecting the barrel. I can smell the oak. Um, I, I, uh, I sense maybe some orange. I'm catching some honey, some cinnamon. The nose is not grand. I've never had this before. So I'm, I'm kind of going off of just, you know, this experience, and you get to have it with me, so I hope you're drinking. Uh, I haven't even looked to see if there's any comments yet. I suppose I'll do that. Uh, I don't see any, so okay. We'll just keep going. I, maybe everybody's surprised that I'm on time tonight. <laughs> uh, or it is Saturday night, so you guys can watch it later. All right, so the nose... There's a, a spice to it, almost a, almost like a five spice. It's not anise, but th that's maybe a component of it. So, yeah, a butter. I'm catching a butter uh, hint to the to the nose as well. So, um, you know, for for only 80 proof, it's got decent legs. It's holding on to the side of the glass pretty nicely. As we talked about on Thursday, bourbons and rice don't have added sugar and they have no carbs. So what is hanging on the edge of the glass is not sugar like you'd see in a wine glass. That's alcohol. So eh, that's not really actually too bad. Let's, uh, let's uh, put it on the palate, see what it tastes like. All right, I'm catching that butter. It's got a grassy tint to it. That sounds less than appetizing, but truthfully, it isn't. Um, it's a spice there I can't quite grab. It's unusual. It's new and unusual. Um, it took a minute for me to catch a profile because it is only 80 proof, and it doesn't leap out at me. Um, I think it's got a, it's got a hay-like quality. Uh, if you've ever smelled fresh hay, it's actually quite pleasant, the smell of fresh hay. And I think that's what this reminds me of. If you were to like add that in butter and maybe, hmm. Very buttery. That is one of the predominant flavors I'm getting. A little bit of caramel. That grassy, hayish type of type of uh, uh, flavor. Um, I'm not, uh, there's maybe a little corn. Maybe that's some of the sweetness I'm getting. Is is there's a little bit of a corn flavor to it. And again, when you think about the flavors, it's a little bit like wine, right? Wine is made out of grapes. <laughs> right? 
and I mean, it can be made out of other things. I've had rhubarb wine, and I've had wheat wine, and I've had a bunch of other stuff. But let's let's just keep it simple, stupid, right? So, if if you're saying that wine is made out of grapes, and you start tasting your wines, and you say, "Oh, I taste a little of this," or "I taste a little of that," taste some black cherry, taste some kiwi. It's not that you're actually tasting black cherry or kiwi. You're tasting a sensation that reminds you of black cherry and kiwi, right? So they didn't put some of the ingredients in this rye that I'm telling you that I sense. What I'm, what I'm telling you is that my brain is translating uh, information that I'm getting from this sip that reminds me of corn or butter. There's no butter in this. They don't put butter in rye or bourbon. But something about the consistency on the tongue, the way it holds on, the, the flavor of the rye itself reminds me of a little vanilla, a little butter, a little, a little hay, uh, those things. So it's, it's the way your brain interprets the flavors that you get. This is not a strong rye. Like I said, it's 80 proof. There's not a lot going on. I would not mix this. Uh, I can't see putting this in a Manhattan or in an old fashioned or anything else for that matter because it just doesn't have the legs for it. Um, it's it's a good beginner rye if you want to start tasting bourbons neat. I will tell you I have ice down here and I am leaning against the idea of putting this on ice. I like to test the different drinks on ice, generally speaking, because I know a lot of people like their bourbon and their rye and whatever on ice. Um, I like my gins and my vodkas on ice. It kind of goes with the territory as far as, they're, as, far as I'm concerned. But um, bourbons and, and ryes, I like drinking neat. Uh, some of them can be added. There it is. I've been trying to suppress that. Um, they can be added in different drinks. Um, this one, I don't know if I would do it. Um, the flavor's fine. It's, it's not delicious it's okay but it just doesn't have enough proof i don't think it'll hold up if you mix it with anything so and i don't think it's going to hold up if i put any ice on this either but we'll we'll find out we're going to do it i just want to give this one more uh one more shot and uh see if i pick up anything else from the templeton rye It's got some smoke to it, just a little. Um, that butter and that that hay really come out. It's it's not it's not very representative of what I would normally drink. The closest bourbon that I can think of to this is Bib and Tucker. Bib and Tucker is very grassy. Um, it's unusual. <coughs> it's unusual, and I like it. I won't drink it all the time because it's not what I go to bourbon for, right? So this one is similar. Is It's not something I'm going to go to all the time. I may consider mixing this with something else. Another rye. I've got some ryes that are quite fantastic, and some of them are pretty high octane. Twist my arm. Um, this one, <coughs> excuse me, this one is um, a bottle that's going to take me a while to get through just because it doesn't do much for me. It may be great for somebody who isn't into this and is just getting started. Um, the flavor, uh, it's spicy. It, it's, um, it's definitely got some body in it. Uh, it's got the oak. It's got, uh, it's got stuff going on. Yeah, I wouldn't call it complex, but it's not dull either. And it is consistent. Some of the more, excuse me, some of the more complex bourbons and ryes, you can take, uh, you can take more and more sips, successive sips is what I was trying to say. And if it's more complex, you'll pull out different notes with every sip, and different people are going to sense different notes and they may sense different notes at different times that's why this is fun so this is recreation right um this one is not 
that complex, therefore it is consistent. With every time I taste this, I get the same thing. The butter is really there. The 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 the, the hay is really there. Um, it's it's just it's just it's grassy. But it, that's a rye. Ryes are often grassy. Their lead ingredient is grass. <laughs> it's rye grass. Um, I normally uh, companies will not post their mash bill. That is the ingredients of the rye. They won't post that. They won't say what the percentage is. This one seems to do that, though. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read it, but we're going to put the cork back on it just so I don't spill it. This is distilled from a mash bill of 95% rye and 5% malted barley. There you have it. That's why it's grassy. It's got 95% rye. So if you are a rye lover, I will tell you that Templeton may be right up your alley. There is a Templeton 7-year, which is going to be higher proof and much more mature. So if you want to try the Templeton in its full expression, you might look for the 7-year. I haven't personally found it, but I haven't looked for it either. So... Let's give it the ice test, just because I said that I would. Um, we'll do that in just a regular old-fashioned glass. Um, tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to add the ice first, because I have a tendency to add it, like, after, or, yeah, after the bourbon, or after the rye, after the drink, and then I end up splashing it on myself. I'm only going to add one cube. I just want to do what I need to do to cool it down. Um, and I don't want to kill it. I did make new ice balls today. I have an ice ball mold, as some of you know. And I made more ice balls today. So next week, we'll do something and we'll do it with a nice, big, clear ice ball. And we'll talk about it, too. We've already talked about it, but if you're new, I don't want to make you go back through all those videos. Although you should, because I'm quite entertaining. <laughs> All right, so we'll just do a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so this is an old-fashioned glass. Uh, these are, this is actually a little small for an old-fashioned glass, but it's along the right lines. They need to be a little bit bigger to, uh, to be able to hold on to the ice balls. My ice balls are bigger than this glass will allow. This one is the official bourbon glass of the uh, Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Um, it, it has a little bit of the characteristics of the Glencairn glass, which has that, that, that snoot at the top, right? Um, so this will help you bring the aroma in, um, but, uh, but I'm not going to use this one tonight because I'm just not going <laughs> to. All right. So it's on ice. We're going to give it a little swirl just to make sure it's all nice and cooled down. Let's give it a shot, shall we? You know, I may like this better on ice. I found that. This, it's a curious thing. I have found that some of the lower end bourbons, for instance, like. Um, Oh, jeeps. Uh, old Granddad. Uh, uh, what's the one? Ah, shoot. Um, <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. Um, it's made by Buffalo Trade. Benchmark. It's their lowest, I think, their lowest end bourbon. Benchmark is one. Uh, there, there's a bunch of low end bourbons. Uh, my dad used to drink Echo Spring. That's a low end bourbon. That's, that's, that's poop. But it's... It's decent on ice. I can drink it on ice. This rye is 80 proof. It's only aged four years. It's not a mature rye. It's 95% grass. Um, but I think that I like what it does on ice. I like what it does when I cool it down, when I add a little bit of water to it. These, these ice cubes are not ice balls, so they're not gonna, they're gonna melt a lot faster than an ice ball would. And I just, I, I, I like this, I think, better cold and on ice, even if it's only one cube. It's, 
it really brings the flavors back together again, where they seem to be disparate when it's neat. Like I can taste the butter, I can taste the grass. Um, on ice, it it's almost like it emulsifies the flavors, bringing them together into buttery grass. <laughs> or, or uh, but but I can taste the oak, and I can taste. Um, the vanilla, it's all there. It's just, it's just where, where some bourbons and ryes flatten out and don't do anything for me on ice. This one actually brings it all together, I think. I still don't know that I would mix it with anything. The grassiness of it may not be what you're after when you're doing like an old-fashioned or something like that. Um, you might choose a higher-end rye. Um, there are some really, really good ones out there. Uh, Willet is very, very popular. It's hard to find. It's so popular. I, I've never seen it in Ohio. I've seen it on the shelf in other states, but not in Ohio. I have a very good friend that lives uh, in bourbon country in Kentucky, and maybe that really good friend might be able to find me a Templeton seven year and maybe some Willet. Just a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, what we did here today. Uh, I don't have a lot really to add. I was going to do a mixed drink with the rye, but after tasting it, I don't, I don't think it's going to do the rye any favors and I don't think it's going to do the mixed drink any favors. It, there's just not enough going on there. That's not to say that I wouldn't try it. I just don't think it's going to be your best bet. I think I think uh, giving this a shot and throwing it on some ice uh, may be refreshing enough for you on a cool winter's eve. Um, it's not as spicy as I had hoped it would be. A lot of spice or a lot of rice have uh, a significant amount of punch. Um, this one being only eighty proof and only aged four years and. You know, it just it just doesn't uh, it just doesn't do a lot. That being said, the flavor's not bad. I've had stuff I have not liked, and this is not one of those things. So, if you're getting started and you want to try a really nice little rye and you want to be able to ice it down like a lot of people like, I can tell you the Templeton Rye, four year, is one I think you're gonna really enjoy. And that's me being real. I would never lie to you. I tell you what I think. It says it's the good stuff. Eh. It's the okay stuff. It's okay. On ice, it's a little better to me. But that's the fun part, right? You can have something neat that I don't like, and I'll put it on ice and it'll be all right, right? Or you can have something that you don't like, and then you put it on ice and you do. Or you mix it, or you do that. I had a friend, we talked about this a few times, but I'll say it again. I had a friend that was not really into the high-proof rare breed and mixed it with Mountain Dew. Now, I don't know if he mixed it with Mountain Dew because he thought it tasted better, or he just wanted to be able to get through the drink. Uh, probably the latter. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, at the end of the day, the, the, the alcohol you buy is an ingredient, right? So if you're having chocolate chip cookies, I love chocolate chip cookies. It's almost my favorite cookie, especially the way my daughter makes them. Mm -mm -mm. Now, it could be chocolate chunk, chocolate chip. It's fine. I'm good. But I can also eat just the chocolate chips or just the chocolate chunks and be very, very happy, right? The rye is merely an ingredient. You can drink the rye as it is, like you would eat a chocolate chip. Or you can mix it in with other things to have a greater whole. Maybe that's just ice. Maybe that's just a splash of water. Or maybe you get brave and decide to put it in a Manhattan. I'm not going to do that with this rye. But you can. Maybe that's how you'll like it. Maybe 80 proof is still too strong for you. In which case, water, ice, or mixing it with something is a good idea. 
There's an app I will recommend to you, and because my eyes suck, I will go to it. No, Apple, I don't want to do a software update. Leave me alone. Uh, okay, so there's an app called Cocktail Flow. Uh, I like this app. If you want to learn recipes and, and try some different things, I, I found one today I, I rather liked. Uh, I don't know if I killed the app. I found this drink, and here it is. Um, so, oh, it went away. Poop. Well, maybe I can find it again. Uh, yeah, I will be able to. Okay, so it is a... Uh, I think it's a rusty nail. Yeah, rusty nail. So you take a glass like this one, which would could be considered an old-fashioned glass, and then you get your jigger with a J, just to make sure that's what it's called. This is a big jig. Maybe that's why I'm not getting the three-quarter ounce. Maybe it's because it's a big jig. It could be. This is a double jigger. This is what you want. Buy one of these. But you use Scotch whiskey and Drambuie. My dad loved Drambuie. I don't care for it, but I would be willing to try it in a cocktail. So I was going to do that. I was going to give you some booze news, and I just ran out of time because I went to the store. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you, uh, if you bought some Templeton, I hope you enjoyed the Templeton. Um, do me a favor, if you would. If you enjoyed yourself and you like watching these shows, uh, share it with somebody. Um, give them the opportunity to like it, too. Uh, Maybe they'll think I'm charming. <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Oh, charming. Yeah, as charming as a boil on your butt. All right. Hey, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to drink a little bit more of this and maybe get something to eat because I haven't done that yet. Probably ought to. Um, and then I'm, I might mix this with something and see what I can concoct like a mad scientist. So be peaceful, be happy. Only you can do that. Nobody else can make you happy but you. If it comes out of a bottle, do it responsibly like I do. <laughs>